the way we consume and share news today, it is largely rooted in social media outlets, a reason why it's crucial to look at what's being discussed online. From the hottest issues to trends for our daily social media minute, we're joined by Yerika. Good morning. Hi. I, I do feel like Adam kind of stole your thunder because it was an image that went viral. It happened to be a defense ministry's uh-huh. old test uh, of, well, well, their, their weapons, I suppose. Right. But it looked like a UFO. Uh-huh. It got everyone talking. Yeah. And the pictures went to viral. <laughs> <laughs> These are the kind of things that we cover on social media. Minute today, it seems that there are more pleasantries to celebrate, like the Rolling Stones naming the 200 greatest singers of all mm-hmm. time, and this so-called prophet of doom. Am I the only one that's just stumbling across this prophet? Uh, are you just stumbling across yeah. the prophet? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I am. <laughs> and I'm assuming our listeners share these sentiment, but we'll get to it in just a moment. Yeah. What is our first story of the day? Uh, we're going to talk about a, a typeface mm. uh, that was created by uh, an old lady. Ah. But we're going to get to that in a little bit. Yeah. So, um, so in celebration of the first New Year yes. since he took office, President Yoon Seok Yeol. Uh, sent out New Year's cards to senior citizens, some key public figures, war veterans, um, who have devoted themselves basically to mm. national and social development. Mm-hmm. And uh, this New Year's card sent by the president reads, uh, this typeface was created by Kwon An Ja mm. from Chilgokun County in mm. Gyeongsangbuk-do province who learned how to write at the age of 76. Oh, that's special. Yeah, there's there's a there's a New Year's message, of course. Okay. And uh, under the message, okay. there is, uh, he's crediting um, this the woman. Yes, exactly. The woman. Okay. That's right. Now, uh, Ms. Kwon, uh, the very person who actually created this typeface, heard that her handwriting was used by... Uh, the president in his New Year's card. Mm. She was so happy and she said, I have no regrets even if I die today. <laughs> High praise. Yeah. High praise. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. So um, we're looking at an image of the card now and the typeface itself. It really does look like somebody picked up a pen and wrote it. Hand wrote it, right? Yeah. And I think that's something else that he wants to really. Yes. Right? The personal touch. Mm-hmm. But I've got to say, that's a pretty stellar typeface. Isn't it? And she learned how to write in her 70s. Exactly. I don't know. It just adds an extra personal touch. Warmth. Yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of hard to do when you're printing out so many of these messages. Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) I wonder if uh, you or our listeners Mm. have heard of the Korean term manhakdo. Ah. Uh, Manhakdo refers to the people who um, learn how to read and write Mm. at a later age than most people do. Now, for many different reasons, uh, not least due to lack of opportunity, Mm. uh, some older generation Koreans never attended school. Mm. Uh, You know, they were were too busy, uh, you know... Picking up in the aftermath of the war. Exactly. Raising raising children at home and, you know, or taking care of their family at a very young age. Mm. And then even after they grow up, uh, they, they, they would support their, maybe their, their male siblings. Uh, in a, and they had to sacrifice themselves in this way. So you can see kind of this unequal uh, distribution of knowledge, That's if right. you will, for a certain generation. Even and within then, the same family. Exactly. Yeah. It's, you have to prioritize who gets to go to school, who gets to learn. Yeah. And it happened to be, at that time, yes. the men in the family. Exactly. Which means that many mm. of these women mm. uh, never learned how to read and write. And And for these people, being illiterate is one of their biggest life regrets. Mm. And in recent years, adult literacy education centers across South Korea have been offering special programs Mm. to help these people, especially Mm. women, to achieve their dream of, well... Knowing how to read. Exactly. I mean, just a few weeks ago when Sunung was taking place, yeah. we talked about a select women of a certain age in That's their right. 60s and 70s. Mm-hmm. So excited to take the college yeah. entrance exam, which in itself is oxymoronic. So excited to take an I exam. Know. But when you <laughs> are, I suppose, deprived of the opportunity at a young age and you finally get that chance, yep. it feels different. Exactly. So this is the background of how the Chilgo Kaima Thai face was born. Yeah. So a literacy education center in Chilgokun in Gyeongsangbuk, the province province, 
uh, provides opportunities for around 400 late learners to learn how to read and write Hangul. And one special achievement that uh, has emerged from this uh, literacy education program is that uh, new typefaces for digital <laughs> word processors have been developed, uh, inspired by the handwriting of these older women. So in May of 2021, mm. Hancom, uh, Korea's leading office software development company, announced that they had developed new fonts mm. based on these Chigo grandmother's writings mm. uh, for their word processor, HWP. Mm. And uh, they selected five uh, styles mm. among their 400 writing styles and developed them into new fonts. And we are, you know, we just streamed images yeah. of these old ladies writing with a pencil, it looks like, yeah. on a piece of paper. And I've <laughs> got to say, that, that is that one, two, three, four, five? That, that's yeah. at least five of the fonts that were selected. Exactly. So these typefaces were named after the original writers, Aww. creators. Yeah. I want to have a typeface named after I me. Know. That is so extraordinary. Yeah. Uh, a lot of our listeners are chiming me uh-huh. saying it's a great thing being given the opportunity Isn't to it? achieve more is always a beautiful yeah. and beneficial thing. I agree. Love this story. Exactly. I think that's why people are so moved by it, yep. right? It could have just been a simple a gift set and that's call right. it a day. But now this kind of story sticks. Uh, this is not the first time uh, mm. President Yoon Seok-yeok actually used this particular really? typeface. Yeah, mm. he, he used it. Uh, this is before he became president. Mm. Uh, he used it to communicate with the younger generation on social media. <laughs> when he was still prosecutor yeah, general for exactly. the country. Yeah. <laughs> so he clearly has a passion. He's sticking yep. with it. On to our second story of the day. Now the Rolling Stone has unveiled the 200 greatest singers of all time. Yeah, we're talking of all time. And I uh, <laughs> Two Korean singers, IU and uh, Jungkook from BTS, are on the list. Mm. Um, uh, IU was ranked 135th and Jungkook 191st. Maybe just the fact that they made it on the list is a big deal. This is, I mean, the Rolling Stones. The ranking itself is not that important, I don't think. No, I I think who came in number one is probably something that we care less about. Unless IU made it to number one, then we'd be talking. (laughs) Are you curious as to who made the number one? Uh, it was Aretha Franklin. Okay. And we're talking about legends here. At number two, we have Whitney Houston. At number three, Sam Cooke. Okay. Uh, at number four, Billie Holiday. It's a little bit humbling. And number five, Mariah Carey. So y- you you get the idea. These are the mm. legends that uh, IU and Jungkook are, you know, share the rankings yeah, exactly. with. That's not such yeah. a bad comparison. Okay, so what did the magazine take into account when selecting the 200 greatest singers of all time? Mm-hmm. It just seems like... How do you measure <laughs> Billy Holiday's success? Put it next to IU's and success yeah. and say they are of the same rings. Right. So the magazine said their choice was based on the originality, the influence, of course, mm-hmm. and the depth of the artist's catalog and the breadth of their musical legacy for the selection. Right. Uh, the magazine said about IU, quote, she has become one of the most highly regarded vocalists in South Korean music. Despite having a soft voice, she has a wide range, mm. a powerful delivery, and a versatility that's allowed her to move easily from bossa nova to 90s chamber pop and from jazz to ballads. I just want to go to one of her <laughs> concerts. I hear it's legendary. Yep. <laughs> and uh, about Jungkook, uh, the magazine said that he boasts a long list of talents. He's a strong performer, has written several songs, mm-hmm. is known to be extremely hardworking and humble despite the success he's experienced at such an early age. So how about that? Congratulations are yeah. in order for both <laughs> IU and members of BTS. Yep. Mm. And finally, on to the story that has captured my attention. Uh, yeah. It's so early on in the year, just three days in, and we just want to talk about gloomy predictions for you know, 2023. I, I think that's the thing. <laughs> because we're so so early in the year. Yes. I mean, we rang in 2023 just 48 hours ago. <laughs> a little over. Yeah. But, uh, you know, people are, you know, they're, they're curious. They're wondering, what is this year going to look like yeah, I mean, in the days and months to come? There must be a reason why fortune tellers are incredibly yeah. popular this time or towards the end of the year. We just, we like knowing things ahead of time. Yeah. What, what is that? Something about managing expectations? Uh, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, according to Nostradamus, who is a French astrologer from the 16th century. That's right. 16th century has yeah. been long gone. 
<laughs> so take what I say with a grain of salt, okay? <laughs> the world is facing another great war and economic ruin in 2023. He said so yes. in 16th century. In his uh, 1555 book, Les Prophéties, uh, the Frenchman is said to have predicted the future, mm. and the book features 942 poetic verses. And kind of the beauty of uh, these verses is that it could really be left to the interpretation of who reads yeah. it, right? Uh, interpret it however you <laughs> would like to, but Nostradamus is believed by some to have predicted 9-11. Yes. The devastation caused by global warming, the rise of Adolf, uh, Adolf Hitler, and even the advancements in AI technology just from poetic verses, huh? Yes. Um, but like you said, 400 years after he published his book, his work remains popular <laughs> because his predictions are entirely open to interpretation and could literally mean anything. I mean, if you just want guidance or yeah. just for fun, it could be interpreted yeah. to your liking. That's uh, right. Now, his workings first saw a great war in the year 2023. Yes. And naturally, I'm inclined to connect the dots and say, is he talking about the war in Ukraine? We don't know. We really Again, don't know. Uh, this uh, ominous prediction comes at a time there's a lot of heightened global ah. tensions, uh, you know, between the world's leading superpowers. And um, if you're worried about this prediction that the Great War of 2023, yeah. take some comfort in the fact that it's going to be ending in seven months if it should happen. If it should happen. Yeah. Here's another prediction. The light on Mars will go out within this it's year. It's so cryptic, isn't it? What does it mean? The light on Mars will go out. That could be a, easily a metaphor. Yeah. Could this be a warning for Elon Musk, mm. whose SpaceX company is planning to send people to Mars by the year 2026? Okay. Uh, it could also hint at issues for NASA's exploration program. Mm. Uh, as we've talked about, uh, the Perseverance rover is currently on Mars, taking pictures and collecting samples. Yes. So we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> That's how you're going to end it. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> These are predictions made 500 years ago. So I just think it's funny that humans are a little bit obsessed with yeah. trying to make these predictions. Now, take it with a grain of salt, as yes. you said. Any last word on predictions yeah, made in 1555? Other things on the list for 2023. There's the economic disaster. Mm. This is what he wrote. So high will the bushel of wheat rise that man will be eating his fellow man. He's talking about cannibalism here. You know, oh. it's chilling. I, I mean, I've got to say, there's n nothing like beautiful about that poem. No, not at all. <laughs> it's just really depressing. Um, this could be a sign of dire things to come okay. as the war in Ukraine wages on. He also mentioned uh, that climate change will accelerate in the year 2023. Uh, he wrote, quote, the dry earth will grow more parched and there will be great floods when it is seen. It's a little bit biblical, yeah. isn't it? Mm. We'll leave it there for now. Leave it up to your <laughs> interpretation. <laughs> hey, I, it's fun, though. It is really yeah. fun. <laughs> Thank you, Erica. Pleasure. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.